Hello and welcome to Gaming the Podcast. My name is John Robertson, joined by Stace Harmon, and together we are Indie by Design. This week on Gaming the Podcast, we are talking about repetition in video games, and contrary to the belief of some, why, when done well, repetition is a great, even an essential thing. So, Stace, if um, we're claiming that repetition is great, so we must have some examples <laughs> of why, or of, of games <laughs> where uh, that show that repetition is so great. No, this is news to me. I'm here to talk about all the reasons repetition is bad. No, I'm not. A lot of the games I enjoy um, are have repetition baked into them in a fundamental way. So there's some very key examples with things like Hades and Returnal, which I mean are both kind of two examples of the same thing as roguelites. Um, they have they have repetition at their at their fundamental heart and without that repetition they would be lesser games if you somehow went through the entire entirety of both of those games without repeating what you were doing um either in action or in area uh, they would be lesser games for it but the the games that are more um or not more interesting but the game games that I want to start talking about first are games where that repetition is is uh still essential but it's kind of part of the charm so something like hitman which is another of my sort of perennial favorites um playing that recently and um and for this podcast as well there's there's some video if you're watching this on youtube um you'll see some video f- that's an example of this and if you're not just be aware that you can be um where hitman has kind of two different tiers of repetition for me so it has the repetition of you have a certain set of levels a very quite a small, relatively small handful of levels uh, where the objectives, um, if you're playing kind of the main game, are the same. You're there to assassinate a person or some people. And that remains constant to the point of they their actions are repeated, their paths through the level, your target's paths through the level are repeated. And the repetition, the joy for me there in the repetition is the going in and just trying all the different ways of finding them and killing them which sounds sinister out of context but it is called hitman so you know so you're there to do a thing and it's just about how you go about it but there is a repetitive element to that um the way that you sort of the process you take and the method that you employ might be different but ultimately the the framework is the same and that is what adds the constant to that situation that allows you to experiment um so that's kind of hitman on a on a sort of higher level, on a um, you know top level overarching sort of explanation of Hitman, is that you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're just doing it in different ways, hopefully increasingly imaginative ways and fun ways. But then there's the kind of the on the ground dialed in repetition, and this is what this this video that I think we'll be playing now is a good example of, where Hitman is designed such that you are intended to play with it and tweak it in real time. So you're meant to experiment with things, with the variables in the level, which harkens back to this kind of toy box um, description that I've used and lots of people have used for Hitman in the past, where the NPCs are deliberately kind of dumb, like in a fun, silly way. So going into this huge underground server farm, as this video is showing, um, and walking around physically altering or tampering with the servers and having the npcs notice that and go and fix it without any further action being taken so long as they don't see you doing it they just think oh how odd that this server rack has somehow uncoupled itself i'll just put that back and they'll do that again and again and again and they're doing that so that you can tweak you can play with something over here and you can see how the game and the level and the npcs react to that And then you can start to understand in real time without needing to restart the level what needs to change. Okay, I can do this. I need to take these people out because they're undoing what I'm trying to put into action. So I'm going to I'm going to go and take those people out. I'm going to put them in a cupboard somewhere. And of course, if it was, you know, if there was any sense of reality to it, that wouldn't happen. Somebody would raise the alarm. The guards wouldn't stop until they found you and you would need to restart the level in order to make small tweaks in your approach. And that would be terrible. That would be horrible. That would be a horrible way to play Hitman would be that every single time you change something, somebody notices and didn't let it go. And you have to restart the level in order to make a change to your approach. So there is a joy. It's a silly, almost childlike joy 
like glee in just playing with this thing, seeing how it reacts and then making changes to your approach. And it can only do that by allowing that repetition, by by promoting and inviting that repetition. And that's one of the things I think we've sort of talked a little bit about this before, but that's one of the things that I love about Hitman is just going back into levels, having completed them, having, you know, a, a, achieved the objectives and just playing with them in this way and seeing how the whole thing reacts. And that, yeah, that for me, and I understand that's, I don't necessarily think that's the case for you, but I think for me, that's one of the, yeah, the joys of Hitman is that it's not the getting the silent assassin or the, you know, top marks, five stars done in three and a half minutes. It's just the the gleeful kind of just playing with it and seeing how it how it fits together and how it works. Yeah. And that is explored through repetition <clears throat> in this yeah, case. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Hitman, but it does, it does play into uh, one of the sort of components or um, connections to repetition that games need in order to be enjoyable in their repetition <clears throat> which is creativity and i would say that you need to embrace cre you need to embrace repetition before you can actually be truly creative and i think this is true or at least reach the pinnacle of your creativity anyway you can start being creative immediately because mm. you need to take risks to do that right well yeah and, and i think this is the same for anything this is the same for failing and thereafter succeeding in hitman failing in a painting before you eventually succeed failing at playing football before you eventually in order to really embrace creativity you need to have undergone repetition enough so that you've mastered the core fundamentals of the thing that you're uh, that you're engaging in before you can let go of that bit of your brain that says i'm still learning how to do this i still need to really know the building blocks and the fundamentals here because only once you've got to that level of mastery can you really start just then focusing 100 percent of your brain on creativity otherwise you're still learning you're still mm. going through the motions you're still well when you play that chord on guitar you're not just playing the chord you're telling your fingers consciously how to play that chord and that limits creativity because you're you're slower and your, mm. your brain function is given up to performance rather than action um uh, and 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 I yeah. think so. Um, yeah, and if you want to be really good at something, including a video game, you need to embrace creativity. And there are games which do that really well. Um, <clears throat> Hitman is one of the games that uses creativity or uses repetition to um, allow your creativity to flourish. I suppose um, a lot of roguelikes or some roguelike like Loop Hero does that. Uh, in how you build your deck i think anything competitive does that almost anything you can think of that's competitive does that like a shoot em up, uh, 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 a shoot em up that's quite an old fashioned um, <laughs> um term like an online <laughs> fps um online card games uh sports games anything like that you need repetition like you can't you can't just go into a game of Gwent or Hearthstone or FIFA or NBA or whatever and mm. expect to be fully creative on your first game. Like you can't. Like you just don't. You just don't understand. You haven't got the repetition that gives you the mastery, that gives you the understanding of not just like your cards in Hearthstone or what your players can do in FIFA, um, but the rules of the game. I mean, obviously it's easier with FIFA if you already know football. Um, but you know, learning the maps in 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 halo or mm. in or in apex or something like you need repetition to build the mastery before you can then engage your creativity they'll, they'll, how willing you are to put up with the repetition will depend on how how what you aspire to right like how good do you want to be what do you want to mm. achieve what, like if you want to be platinum rank in rocket league well you're gonna have to put in hundreds of hours to to practice that most people are gonna have to put in hundreds of hours to practice that so Mm. In order to fulfill your any aspirations that you might have, you need to embrace the repetition and see it as a good thing. No, explicitly see it as a good thing, not just something to overcome and put up with, but see it as this is this is where I'm really getting better here. It's not in the playing. It's not in the victories. Really, that will come with repetition, but it's the repetition that's the key. Yeah. Well, the yes. Yeah. The, I think the area for me, the, the kind of to touch perhaps on why repetition has been used negatively in the past or or the kinds of repetition that I find 
not enjoyable. There's a couple of different areas. One would be in a game that I would otherwise love, like The Last of Us, where playing it on something like Grounded Difficulty, there's elements of that that I really enjoy, but the bits that I don't enjoy are like intense combat scenarios that I already know when I play it through on, say, Hard. When I come back and play this later on a higher difficulty, this bit is going to suck because it's already hard and there's no other way for me to get through it than to just keep banging my head against this brick wall. And that is that that's the repetition through, I guess, player failure or player death that I don't enjoy. That's not a that's not like a fun thing. I don't I don't take much from that. I don't think, OK, but at least I got better. At least I am now, I don't know, more accurate aiming or at least I understand the stealth better or whatever. It's just like a this thing needs to be overcome. And I think perhaps historically, that's where the notion of repetition as a negative has come from in games well, like where... Mario or Crash Bandicoot. Like just you just keep falling off the cliff or you keep dying on the Goomba enemy that you should have like, okay, fight that guy fifteenth time. Yeah. And there's a yeah, and there's a frustration to that. But I think I would say that in those games the repetition is still kind of intended to be part of a part of the learning curve. And some of that is about how games deal with repetition, how quickly they get you back into the game, even just something as simple as that or that thing, you know, versus something like that, that we've all experienced where the checkpoint is at a particular point where there's some random NPC bark that if you die, you keep hearing that same line over and over again. It's not necessarily or perhaps that's just an external focus that you put that frustration on rather than, you know, being frustrated with the the action that you're taking over and over again. Um, so yeah, something like The Last of Us, the repetition in in that, if indeed there is, because it's not intended repetition, it's not designed for repetition. It's just a result of a of a of a failure. It's a result of another thing. Those are the kinds of yeah, the repetition that I don't enjoy. And I think ta- it's also important to recognise that tastes change. Going back, you know, from when I was playing games as a kid, something like Ghouls and Ghosts there's you know and mario and there's there's repetition built into that there's an acceptance that you're going to die there's an acceptance that you're going to get to level three and then you're going to lose all your lives and you're going to have to go back to the beginning there isn't as much there's still definitely games that do that and there's still an appetite for that but the landscape has changed and that's and technology has changed and that's not that's no longer a necessary part of game design that's just a you know it, it might be intentional you might design a game like that super meat boy or something i don't know like something that's uh requires that repetition to get good um but it doesn't have to be like that anymore and so you know some people have sort of moved on from that or never experienced in the first place and and are not interested in that kind of repetition so yeah i think a repetition that isn't necessarily designed into the game it's just as a result of something that happens probably player failure um, yeah that's where negative connotations, I think, of repetition of yeah, and I think that from. that applies really only to single player games as well because you die and play a failure in Halo. I mean, that's the only reason you'll ever die. If you never mm. fail, then you shouldn't die um, in theory, unless your plan's bad. Um, so dying in something like Halo is part of the key learning experience, right? Because then you you know how else do you see your failures without dying really and then you and then you mm. right, if you if no one's ever picking up on your failures then you're not being forced to engage in a repetition to overcome that failure or remove that failure from your your game which i suppose has in your through the way you play which i suppose has <clears throat> well, i don't suppose i know it's more it's more acceptable more intriguing more aspirational to die and then succeed in for me in a in a competitive shooter mm. um because you're constantly judging yourselves against whilst the gun whilst the shooting of the guns and going into the same maps and stuff is repetitive the the situations that you see are never replicated exactly they're always slightly different so you're learning mm. not how to overcome that specific exact situation that you just failed in but you're taking a skill from that or you're taking a, a learning a piece of education from that failure that you can then apply to every single situation you will ever come across again. Whereas in, I think, something like yeah. The Last of Us or Uncharted, when you die, you're just applying that same thing to the exact situation again and trying to just overcome it once before moving on. You're not mm. really rewarded, I guess, for your learning in the same way as you are in like Halo. 
because you're learning a universal skill that can be applied to everything that you ever see again. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, you're not kind of adding any additional tools to your toolbox. So you? you're not like learning that. Oh, okay, there's a sight line there that I didn't know about. Yeah, because you move on in the last. I can apply class. that to future yeah. situations. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, and like, oh, okay, maybe you, maybe you do get better at aiming through repetition or whatever. But it's not. It isn't the same. Uh, the the payoff isn't the same and the repetition is avoidable and that's you know that's a tough way to learn that lesson that's a tough way to to get good at any particular thing is yeah learning that's kind of almost learning through failing rather than learning through specific yeah. repetition and that so i mean the, 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 so i came up with um basically the the concept that if you're going to have repetition in your game and as i said most games have repetition almost all games do um then you need then the good where repetition is good is when it it boosts boosts your ability to be creative, but also where it can also be a, you don't necessarily need creativity on the player's part for repetition to be good either. I don't think because you can just have good rewards instead, right? Like you can just have. Mm. So I'm thinking like Destiny, Diablo two, repetition so repetitive, same thing over and over and over again. You're mm. not really being creative in those games. Well, on Destiny multiplayer, uh, uh, competitive multiplayer, you are. But in PvE, you're not really. You're just going through the motions again and again and again. Um, and you might have been going through the motions again and again and again in the same strike even, not just like across different strikes. You might just do the same strike all the time to try to grind it for the right loot. But if the loot is right, if the rewards are good, and in, and in Diablo, you're not being especially creative. Like there are more choices to make in like you're leveling up and stuff. But still, you're just trying to create a character or a set of characters within your party that are just going to do the same thing every single time. And it's predictable. And the, 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 the predictability of having the same result every time in something like Diablo is super important because you're just going to be grinding for loot all the time. So you want to know that you're going to be able to grind through that level every single time you do it. You're never going to fail. Um, but the rewards are good enough in those games. Like the percentage chance that you're going to get the great loot drop is enough of an incentive, almost like gambling. Like that's it's a similar kind of feeling. Like... The route in, when you're playing roulette, you're just doing the same boring, monotonous thing every single time, putting your chips on whatever number you choose. But the reward payoff is enough, like during the repetitive action and the repetitive action of the ball going round the, the roulette, um, that feeling of like, this might be the one, that's good enough. And that's the same in Diablo. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm farming this boss. Will this be the time I finally get that sword or whatever it is that you're you're looking for that can be that can be good that can be good enough in and of itself and then the games that can apply both uh, re uh repetition equaling creativity and repetition equaling rewards like they they've you know there are games that do it both like the souls born games are that they're both creative and very good at the rewards for your um <clears throat> repetition sports games anything competitive same like they they boost your creativity and they give you great rewards now great rewards obviously are subjective because you might not care about your rank in halo going up or whatever but for people that do then that's um then that's a great thing because you know you're going to compare yourself to other people your rank is one way that you can compare that so it's it's a valuable it's a valuable a valuable thing to grasp for that without repetition you just can't you just can't do it that I think that's yeah that's an interesting point. I think the the repetition in I think probably for me it's the repetition in like where the joy comes from is is the repetitiveness of the action where the action itself is enjoyable where the action itself is has a it's the kind of it's not a means to an end. So in the cases of something like Diablo, Destiny, like there are instances there where you are reliant on that repetition. And if the game stops doing that, if the game, for example, like all of a sudden, instead of, you know, dropping one of X pieces of loot um, from a, t a particular boss or, or of a certain rarity, if it stops doing that, then stuff breaks down. Like if you can no longer rely on that repetitive <laughs> result, uh, and you're just looking, you're rolling the dice, you're gambling effectively. Yeah, you're trying to find like one in 20, one in 50, one in whatever. Um, then that stops being enjoyable because you can no longer, you know, it's like if you spin the roulette wheel when it comes up number 39 and you're like, well, wait, 
there weren't even 39 numbers for me to bet on. How has that happened? It's no longer, that's not a, that you sort of broken out of that loop. Well, yeah. Or, or if it comes up as the same number every single time, if it's 15, 15 times in a row, yeah. it's like, well, yeah. there's the sort of like the illusion and the reward of randomness through repetition is lost. Uh, like you need the failure yeah. in order, or you need the failure incurred by repetition to make the reward incurred by repetition meaningful. Like you can't just have uh, a good thing all the time. You need the failure to make the good, to contextualize the good, you know? Yeah. But that does need, I think for me, that does need to be designed into the game because again, in that instance of like a single player, like the last of us uncharted, the, f- the failure there is not enhancing anything. I could happily go through that game succeeding there's a very fine line to walk for the designers and it's almost impossible to do that for as wide a player base as games like that have because ideally you're never dying ideally you're never failing ideally you're getting through every situation you're just doing so by the skin of your teeth they're ratcheting up the tension and then you have the release of getting through it without having to repeat it Uh, and failure there it can spur you on. It can, you know, it can feel more, it can feel like a relief or it can feel satisfying when you finally get over the hump of a certain part of a game or a certain boss. Um, but it's also, I think ideally in those games, you're not failing at all. You're just... Yeah. Well, how much of that do you think is that those games, in some of their design and certainly in a lot of their marketing and a lot of their communications, they actually, we won't really use a lot of game terminology and they'll position themselves more as Mm. cinematic experiences or movies um, more than they are games. So cinematic experience movies, repetition is not good, right? (laughs) Like that's not, that's not what you want. It's boring. Um, Just see the same actions on screen. The characters going through the same thing again. So it's almost like those get, they've kind of always made a rod for their own backs by saying that they're cinematic and that they're, they're taking this inspiration from this non gaming thing constantly. Well, then how does the, the threat and the tension and the rewards and the feeling of success that comes from finally overcoming something that you've died five times on, how does mm. that manage to blend itself nicely with the idea that actually this is less game and more cinematic experience? Like, cause it can't. Yeah. Well, yes. And I, th- yeah, yeah, I think that they do, they do make a rod for their own back. I think they, and those aren't the bits that we enjoy. You know, The Last of Us is a franchise that I love, but those aren't the bits of that game, that experience that I enjoy. And they're not the bits that you talk about afterwards. You know, I, I died this many times on this particular combat situation or or this boss, and I finally overcame it. That's not, you know, that's not really part of the conversation where it will be in others, in, in you know, a, a Souls game or something like that. There is that, oh, yeah, I had to fight that boss. 20 times but the the expectation is different and you accept that i think you accept going in into a souls game into you know into a hitman into anything that that you're going to be doing part of this thing again and again and and that is intended to be enjoyable and that depends on your expectation of it if you go into something thinking into a souls game thinking i'm going to beat this first time i'm not going to die a single time then you're probably going to be disappointed, but you're also going to miss out on what has been designed as kind of a key part of the game. There's a whole, you know, there's a whole set of mechanics around dying. There's, there's reasons to die in, in, you know, demons. Yeah. And in a Soulsborne game, you have to have repetition anyway. Like even if you didn't die a single time, you still be going through the same levels again and again and again and again, fighting the same enemies again and again, Mm. uh, using the same weapon again and again. Like, so repetition is still built into those games as a core element. Even if you succeed at every possible avenue, you'll still be Ex, um, succeeding on repetitive things unless you're just so good that you only have to play through one time each and then you've you've solved the whole thing you've got everything you don't need to grind to level up like you're just that good like but for most players or of how the game's designed repetition even if you never die is still a core component of how that game works and the repetition becomes i think in that case if you are that kind of player the repetition i think just becomes more tightly focused so the repetition of seeing an enemy attack a few times to learn the timing for parrying or for avoiding attacks like that it the the repetition kind of gets 
doled in or out depending on how good a player i suppose you are or or yeah i suppose that's your skill ceiling right like that's the same as in an online fps that's the same as in understanding exactly how your weapon is going to operate um you know you see someone across the way aiming at you like you notice their gun you notice their movements they've ducked like it's just Mm. reading the room basically like you need repetition in order to read the actions and the in this case the animations or whatever you're seeing um that are coming back at you and i think i think on the to go back to like the diablo um um repetition the ideas around repetition diablo you can see by looking, I think it's looking at repetition as to why games as a lens into why a game is good or bad is quite interesting because I think you can look at another RPG, say Final Fantasy XIII. I didn't pick it randomly. <laughs> I thought about it. Um, that The repetition in that is really bad, certainly in the first half of the game. And I think it's because it doesn't allow creativity and it doesn't provide reward for enough reward for your for under for um engaging in the repetition Mm. because it doesn't provide creativity in the sense that the leveling up is really strict much stricter than it is in diablo so you don't really have like a means to decide how you're going to engage in the repetition and which which um tools you're going to use to overcome the repetition and get through it in um you know intelligibly and in a in a way that's that you've chosen Whereas you can do that in Diablo. There's lots of choice as to how you undergo and undertake your, your repetition. So you're not getting the, the benefit of repetition providing mastery to be creative. Final Fantasy XIII doesn't give you that. Um, and also the rewards are not very good because like you're, you, you defeat one area, one corridor-based area, and then you move into another corridor-based area, and then another corridor-based area. And also, like, the, the carrot on a stick in a lot of JRPGs can be the cutscenes, slash story, but the story and the cutscenes in Final Fantasy XIII are rubbish as well. So there's no payoff for you undergoing your, your repetition. Your repetition doesn't give you built-in, baked-in rewards that are worthwhile, like loot or story. And the repetition, there's not enough um variety in the gameplay for the repetition to allow you to dominate the game through your amazing creativity that you've built through mm. understanding and and repetition so the game just feels a bit like the repetition in that game feels like a bit of a prison like you're just going through the same thing and you're not being given yeah. new stuff as a payoff and you're not being given um choice as to how you undergo that that repetition yeah and in that in that very specific instance, there's I think also perhaps the danger of like broken promises or because it's a sequel as the thirteen will uh, probably clue you in on. It also coincidentally um, like off the back of Final Fantasy twelve that was was very open with how you approached it. Some people would you know say it's it's just a system of like coding or programming and that they don't like that. But there's a lot of options. There's a lot of options for creativity if you want to engage with that. Um, and I do. In that particular instance, uh, Final Fantasy XIII was actually the first game that my wife ever bought herself, having played and loved Final Fantasy XII. She then bought Final Fantasy XIII, and you can imagine what a disappointment and shock to the system that was, because it was nothing like the previous game. So in that case, there was like a, do you have a responsibility to provide a similar experience to what you've already done? And if you don't, what are you providing instead? And if that's what you're providing instead... Well, shame on yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, Final um, Fantasy games have so... always been quite different game to game. Yeah, they are. I know that. Um, I know. Yeah. That was just a very specific anecdote that it happened to, uh, happened to come so to mind. So what do you think about um, repetition in the form of, I guess it's more replayability than repetition, although they're mm. obviously intrinsically linked. If you replay something, you're going to get some, re- some um, repetition. So I'm thinking there are, there are games that I've played time and time and time and time again. Um, like the GTA games, I will play those for time mm. and time again, not really doing anything, just like going around, just doing stuff in the world. Um, Resident Evil, things like Friday the 13th. Like these are, what do you think of repetition being a space for calm almost? Like you, like, you know, like yeah. familiarity. Well, it's, like, it's like when... Sometimes, like if you're hungover or whatever, the only thing you want to do is watch a film you've already seen before. You don't want yep, your brain to have to yeah. engage in learning something new and learning the subtly different language in this movie or in this game to a, a similar game. Or you, you just want, you just want something you, you've already seen. 
You want what you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is a big reason that I think I still continue to play Hitman is for that. It's for, I, you know, there, there is a level of, of comfort. There's a, like a coziness to it of putting that on and doing a few things differently, but ultimately knowing kind of where it's at. I don't need to stretch my brain to learn a whole new thing or to, to like learn the language of a different game. Because um, I think that's kind of that's kind of mastery, right? Like you're you're familiar, you're calm with it, and you're it's a meditative experience because you've mastered the the actions and every and what you're gonna what you're gonna see from it. Like you've got yeah you've yeah yeah you've mastered it. You you know it inside out. And therefore, it can't really surprise you unless you do something surprising to it. There is for me at least a a joy in the repetition of the actions, but that can still be tied to having a ultimate goal that, that varies in some way. So in Hitman, you know, that might be, you know, those, those levels are designed to be played again and again. And the biggest sort of thing cluing you in on that is that there are different achievements for you to get different in-game achievements, different like challenges that you can complete that are based on killing the same targets in multiple different ways. Now you can cheat the system if you really want to, and you can load up a game, you can eliminate your target through a headshot, and then you can just reload your save from two and a half minutes ago and approach that target again and eliminate this them this time through, you know, pushing them off a balcony or poisoning their drink or whatever. That's not what's intended. It's intended that you're going to play through that multiple times and you're going to take a different path and you're going to end up the end goal is you eliminate your target, but the method through which you do it is intended, I think, to be like a comfort blanket. It's like, you know the lay of the land, you know kind of wh what their movements are going to be. And yeah, this points to this sort of mastery element that you're talking about. Um, and it's and I think at the point that I've run out of goals would probably be the point where the repetition then becomes, uh, maybe that becomes front and centre and it becomes sort of a negative. So in some even something like Returnal that I've completed and now got a platinum trophy on there's still little tiny things that i can aim for and there is a wonder almost to uh going through something like returnal and just taking a moment to remember back to the first time that i played that game and how slowly and how carefully i walked through those environments and you know jumped at every noise around the corner and all the rest of it and now like I tear through the that first biome and there's a feeling of mastery there that is there's like a flow state which doesn't happen in something like Hitman there's a certain pace that you can play Returnal at and a certain expertise that you can apply to the weapons and the enemy patterns and all of that that the Housemark I think in particular does very good does, does very well they've done that with their previous games as well um things like you know Next Machina and and uh even back to, was it Outland? Uh, there was a game from a long, long time ago that was a similar thing. Um, so yeah, there's a different sense of mastery there and a different sense of comfort and a different sense of challenge. But those, I think that's why I often return to games. Hades again is another one because there's always still, so, there's always something to aim at and the actions are repetitive by nature, but they are still pointing towards a goal. They're still like, we're trying to achieve a thing um and those yeah i've got i've got a lot of time for that I've, there's a lot of fun in that and i think you know like the rise of roguelites over the last few years or the 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 popularity of them is pointing to a not a growing appetite but it's pointing to an appetite for that kind of thing like the, we've talked about returnal being a triple a experience is that fair for the type of game that it is mm. etc and the and the how little information it gives the player and that it expects something of the player it expects you know what every game does but it ex does it expect too much of the player to you know to dedicate that much time to even figuring out what's going on and how you play it um but i think the reason that that can exist outside of possible external marketing conversations and and all of that is because there is a perhaps an, a more of a willingness an increased willingness to accept that that is part of the point of the game is that again and again you yeah know, the loop like well yeah I, th I think that's much more mainstream that sort of thing is because you see that in online games as well right like competitive games have always been popular since i don't know street fighter or, or pre even pre previous um 
But nowadays, repetition in online games, uh, because there are so many more competitive games, like repetition is just like par for the course now, surely. Like when you play Fortnite, it's mm. the same map all the time. And okay, they make changes to it over, over time, but small ones. Um, in Halo, you play the same maps all the time. In FIFA, the field shape doesn't change. In a racing game, the track is the same all the time. Um, so you're getting mastery over those environments and mastery over those weapons and mastery over the mechanics and the jumping and the movement and stuff. Um, but the thing that changes over time, I think the intrigue in that is that you're going against real people all the time. So you can't master everything. You can't master, you can't memorize, but you can master it. You can't memorize enemy movements. You can master how you might mm. react in certain situations when you see certain movements happening. Um, yeah, I would. I mean, I'd pick Friday the Thirteenth out of just of that list that you just get, you know gave up, reeled off off the top of your head. That that's notion the of most like repetitive you're comfortable one of with the online competitive games that I play because it's the least complex. Okay, sure. So, it's so got that's the, the least thing I was going to ask you about bits to pick apart. Right, because that stood out as like a game that has that thing of well, you're going up against real people, so presumably there's always this unknown element. There's always a wild card in the form of yeah, how but I think either you as the bad guy or the other person is is going to behave and what they're going to do. Yeah, but I think do. it's more predictable in something like Friday the 13th than it is in, say, Halo or something. Because even though in Halo you've got the right. same skills as the other person, and in Friday the 13th you have different skills than the other person, because Jason has different abilities than the counsellors, it's still it's more predictable because even though they've got different skills, they're a more narrow skill set. Um, whereas even though yeah. in Halo, you can only really yeah. throw, shoot, and use your gadgets, how you use those in unison, how you use those, um, how you use tactics and formation with your teammates when you push, when you're aggressive or not, the almost like the very, uh, it's, yeah, they're very interpretable actions in, in Halo. You can use the same action differently in lots of different situations, but in, Friday the 13th, your, those actions that you have are very specific. Like, they're kind of locked. Like, yeah, occasionally mm -hmm. you see them used creative, creatively. But, you know, when Jason's bashing down a door, his bashing down a door animation only works for bashing down a door. Like, that's it. Whereas mm -hmm. shooting in Halo could be yeah. lots of different things. You might shoot to kill someone. You might shoot just to damage them. You might shoot to distract them. Like, you can do lots of things. Um <clears throat> So does that mean there's less, and maybe this is part of it as well, like the games that I enjoy, there's there's room for expression in the repetition, whereas in Friday the 13th and games like it, it sounds maybe there's a bit more like there is optimal decisions to make. I mean, of course, there is in any game, but there is a almost, there are optimal decisions to make. And if you're not making those decisions, if you're not taking that path through a level, if you're not reacting in this way, when the your opposition is doing this then yeah. you're kind of doing it wrong or there's like well, I... that's like oh you need to learn more to understand how this works whereas in a halo there's more room for expression with the actions that you do have yeah I, I think there are that it's easier to see what the ideal move is in something like friday the 13th but it's still it's still very situational it's still based on the exact situation that you've got there so i think that still differs from something like mm. uh, a single player game where the stream of enemies let's say like a shoot em up like a top down shoot em up like ikaruga or something this the, the sequence of enemies that you're going to get is still exactly the same so there is going to be a mathematically mm. definite best way of acting in mm -hmm. in second number yeah. 15 in that game and that will be the same in the next time you play at seconds 15 and the next and the next and Friday the 13th that's not because the exact situation you're up against is slightly different each time uh just the same as in football right like it might it might seem like it's, it's always optimal to pass to the inside defender or something but actually depending on where that midfielder is two foot different than he was last time actually that's the wrong decision so it's still fully mm situational in a game like friday the 13th it's just that you've got less it's not you've got less tools but you've got more more sort of singular tools like tools that just do a singular thing so you, yeah so yeah so you're less open to interpretation than you are in a good shooter um than you are in that but it's still mm. wholly situational it still depends on you know if there's crashing down that door might be the right choice if there's one counselor inside but you could be in the exact same minute of the match and exact same building but there's three counselors inside and then it becomes a bad idea 
Um, so mm. you, so you're kind of going through the motions more than you are in Halo, but you're going through the motions much less than you are in a game that has like sequenced, predictable enemies in it. Yeah, yeah. So okay, well, yeah. So that I think that's for me. That's kind of the my conclusion is that that it's it's the it's the joy in the re- the, the repetitive element has to have joy in the action of doing the thing uh notwithstanding anything else so there might be goals there might be loot at the end of that there might be something that you're aiming for through doing that action but it's how it feels in the moment that you're doing it is it enjoyable to do over and over and over again and if it is if it feels good if it's been designed well if that if you can achieve either a flow state or just a level of comfort or there's an sort of anticipation in diving into that thing that you've done again and again, then that's where that kind of that joy of repetition comes from. I think for me, which I think is, is an interesting thing for me personally, because it does perhaps highlight why I have this stable of games, particularly at the moment and over the last year or so that I go back to again and again and again. And I really enjoy um, is because of those things. It's that joy in the act of doing that thing again and again. And then there's sort of support systems around that, that, make it fulfilling um from a game perspective i sort of bring my own joy to it and then the game is kind of reinforcing yeah. that as well yeah and for me like i said what i like um the creativity mainly so repetition mastery leading to you being able to intelligibly be creative uh, in genuinely creative mm. ways as well i don't just mean the way that the game gives you like just purely creating you know you see things online all the time where in like battle royale game apex Fortnite, people are doing things that no one's ever seen before and it's like whoa that was like genuinely mm. incredible and that's not coming from someone okay maybe if you're really lucky that's coming from someone who's played the game for the first time but typically that's coming from the streamer that's played the game for two million hours that just knows mm. that yeah, it's like a beautiful mind like he's seeing through or she's seeing through the matrix and it's like picking out these bits it's like whoa didn't even know that was possible um or if you're looking for something less minds um sort of exciting for the minds then yeah just <laughs> some loot in diablo 2 that would do <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Give me the right color loot yeah. with the right percentage points um, next to yeah. it and that's it yeah um, I mean. um <laughs> all right so that was our chat our discussion on why repetition is a great thing why it should be embraced why it shouldn't be what, what you call it vilified i guess by some people <laughs> Um, so let us know what you think about repetition uh, do you like it do you not like it what are some, what are some examples of games that do it well uh, and less well you can come chat with us at uh, Indie by Design we are at Indie by Design on Twitter and on all other social media networks otherwise you can go check out the books that we make we make books on video games you can check those out at IndieByDesign.net otherwise we'll see you again next week